the dorsal column medial lemniscus pathway. Firstly, let's get orientated. On the left, we have a coronal section of the central nervous system. On the right, we have corresponding transverse or axial sections of the spinal cord, the open and closed medulla, the pons, midbrain, and internal capsule. The dorsal column pathway carries two point discriminative touch and conscious proprioception. It's made up of two separate tracts the fasciculus gracilis for the lower body and fasciculus cuneatus for the upper body. Firstly, we'll look at the fasciculus gracilis, which provides the lower body. This exists the length of the cord with inputs from sacral, lumbar and thoracic segments up to T6. The first order neuron from the receptor ascends ipsilaterally in the cord in the fasciculus gracilis. It terminates in the gracile nucleus at the junction of the open and closed medulla. Here you can see the first order neuron entering the spinal cord via the dorsal root ganglion and ascending ipsilaterally in the cord before terminating in the gracile nucleus. The first order neuron synapses with the second order neuron in the gracile nucleus. The second order neuron runs ventromedially as the internal arcuate fibres across the midline to enter the contralateral medial lemniscus. Here you can see the second order neuron decussating in the medulla. The second order neuron then ascends through the brainstem to the ventral posterior lateral nucleus of the thalamus, where it terminates. In the thalamus, the second order neuron synapses with the third order neuron, which ascends via the internal capsule to the primary somatosensory cortex in the postcentral gyrus located in the parietal lobe. Within the somatosensory cortex, there is somatotopic arrangement, so this sensation from the lower body is delivered more medially in the cortex. Here we can see the fasciculus gracilis, which is located medially within the cord. Now we'll look at the fasciculus cuneatus, which provides the upper body above T6. Again, the first order neuron from the receptor, which enters at the dorsal root ganglion, ascends ipsilaterally in the cord, this time in the fasciculus cuneatus. This first order neuron terminates in the cuneate nucleus, again at the junction of the open and closed medulla, just lateral to the gracile nucleus. Here you can see the first order neuron entering at the dorsal root ganglion before ascending in the fasciculus cuneatus before terminating in the cuneate nucleus. In the cuneate nucleus, this neuron synapses with a second order neuron, which then runs ventromedially again in the internal arcuate fibres across the midline to enter the medial lemniscus. Here we can see the decussation of the second order neuron after its origin from the cuneate nucleus. This second order neuron also ascends through the brainstem to the VPL of the thalamus, where again it synapses with the third order neuron that passes to the somatosensory cortex through the internal capsule, this time delivered more laterally as this sensation is from the upper part of the body. Here we can see the fasciculus cuneatus next to the more medial fasciculus gracilis. Now let's recap the dorsal column medial lemniscus pathway. For the lower body below T6, the first order neuron runs from the receptor to the dorsal root ganglion before ascending in the fasciculus gracilis to the gracile nucleus in the medulla. The second order neuron runs from the gracile nucleus, decussates, and then ascends in the contralateral medial lemniscus to the thalamus. 
The third order neuron runs from the thalamus to the medial part of the cortex via the internal capsule. For the upper body above T6, the first order neuron runs from the receptor to the dorsal root ganglion before ascending in the fasciculus cuneatus to the cuneate nucleus in the medulla. The second order neuron runs from the cuneate nucleus, decussates and then ascends in the contralateral medial lemniscus to the thalamus. The third order neuron runs from the thalamus to the lateral part of the cortex via the internal capsule. Finally, let's look at lesions of the dorsal column pathway. A lesion in the fasciculus gracilis or cuneatus in the spinal cord will lead to ipsilateral loss of discriminative touch, vibration and proprioception below the level of the lesion. The loss is ipsilateral because the fibres have not yet decussated. A lesion in the medial lemniscus through which the fibres ascend in the brainstem will lead to contralateral loss of discriminative touch, vibration and proprioception below the level of the lesion. This time the loss is contralateral because the fibres have already decussated within the medulla. Similarly, a lesion in the somatosensory cortex itself will also lead to contralateral loss. Again, because the fibres have already decussated within the medulla. Remember, the dorsal columns lie posteriorly or dorsally within the cord. Therefore, a lesion to the dorsal part of the cord will lead to loss of the dorsal column sensations below the level of the lesion. This is known as posterior cord syndrome. A lesion of half of the spinal cord or hemisection will lead to ipsilateral loss of the dorsal column sensations below the level of the lesion. There will also be ipsilateral loss of the motor function below the level of the lesion and contralateral loss of the spinothalamic sensations one to two segments below the level of the lesion with ipsilateral loss of these sensations at the level of the lesion. This is known as Brown-Sicard syndrome.